Hello, here I am on Hampstead Teeth, ready to go for a walk and talk with you to give you a little introduction to the autumn books for Emily's Walking Book Club. Um, so I'm going to put these in my bag and do one at a time. Um, we're going to begin with, oh, by the way, the phone was resting on a helpful tree trunk. Um, this is the, the World My Wilderness by Rose McCauley. Um, it's about young Barbary, who is a teenager and has spent the Second World War running wild in the south of France with her mother and the sort of French resistance. And it's been a world of kind of collaborators and um, as well as resisting the Nazis. But she is then sent off rather um, kind of harshly to London where she goes into this very sort of drab, uptight world of her father. And it's how she kind of struggles with, with the wildness of what she's known and what's within her in this very unwild situation in London until she finds the wilderness of the bomb sites around, the, around St Paul's Cathedral. And there are these amazing descriptions of the, the kind of bomb sites of London and the city that's been ruined, um, coming into bloom and somehow in these wild spaces she can kind of confront the wildness within her and um, it's an amazing book and I'm really glad that somebody gave it to me from the Walking Book Club's Christmas book swap and um, various Walking Book Clubbers have recommended Rose McCauley to me over the years so this really was like the universe telling me you must actually read this when I unwrapped it and it was like oh, okay Rose McCauley, The World My Wilderness, I will read it. Um, and I'm actually so glad I waited till now to read it because it's very much about the psychological trauma of war um, and it looks at the sort of aftermath of the war, whereas the July book that we're currently reading, Saplings, is very much about sort of the process of the war, the Second World War itself. So it's like the perfect follow-up. And it's really interesting and great nature writing, great coming of age story. It's kind of a classic and, and it gives a really different insight to London at that time, which is, I don't know, a kind of fascinating time when, when the city was in ruins and, and everyone was sort of struggling to, um, to kind of rebuild themselves. Right, now I've got to work out how I'm going to swap this book for another one. Maybe I'll sit down here. Ah, okay. Next up, our October book. Um, okay, up we get. Um, I don't know if you can recognise where I am on the heath. Um, this is often quite muddy in, in the winter. Now it's kind of dry. We're actually just getting to this beautiful, can you see this like carpet of leaves on the avenue of limes? Okay, ah, sorry. Sure, other other people who talk to their phones see this in a much, much more coordinated way. Right, October, we have got Braithwaite's To Sir With Love. Um, this, is, this is a novel I've only just discovered. I was basically, it's, October is Black History Month. I always really try to find a book by a writer of colour, um, particularly a black writer, I, for, this, for this month. And... I was particularly interested in trying to find other Windrush writers because I do feel that our discussion on the Lonely Londoners a few years ago was one of our best. Um, of course, been, the whole Windrush scandal is so in the news, it would be interesting to, to look at the kind of fictional counterpart to, to this situation. So um, I came across, after much kind of sleuthing online, um, this book, To Sir With Love, and again, it's, it's set just after the Second World War, so it kind of pairs quite nicely with um, the Rose Macaulay. It's a very different perspective. It's a semi-autobiographical novel, and it's about Rick Braithwaite, um, an ex-RAF pilot, who is very well-educated and qualified for a job in British engineering, but he cannot get one because he is black. So... Out of desperation, he, he doesn't give up on everything he decides to teach. 
and he gets a job at this East End school. It's quite tough and rough and they've got quite kind of unorthodox teaching methods. And he teaches and it's this kind of amazing journey and it's it's interesting. It's very much about racism and prejudice. There's also the kind of perspective of class prejudice in there as well. Um, but it's very much about overcoming these obstacles and kind of perseverance getting you through. So I think it's a, it's a very thorny issue, but it's a very positive message in the end. Um, and, and it's fascinating. It's a fascinating portrait of London at that time and such a different perspective to the Rose Macaulay. So yeah, really, really good book and a really interesting counterpart. I just got a jog over here so I can sit down and try and do the next book. So maybe I can lodge this down here. Okay, hang on. Okay. Ooh, don't fall. Okay. Oh, nice perspective. Okay, so for November we have got Just Kids by Patty Smith. Um, I read this book when it first came out and I absolutely loved it. It's heartbreaking, uh, her relationship with Robert Maplethorpe, his awful death from AIDS, which is brought up like right at the beginning. Um, but it is, again, it's a, I think it is a very positive book. It's about her, um, her devotion to her, sorry, it's by Patti Smith. So it's about her, Patti Smith's devotion to her art. It's about being broke and not giving up. And it's also this kind of amazing portrait of New York in the 60s and 70s with, you know, like everyone is in it. Every place that you've ever heard of in New York at that time is here. And she's sort of been there. So there's Warhol's factory, there's the Chelsea Hotel. Um, it's a great book really inspiring um i think particularly if you're someone who is doing something creative with your life and you know maybe you need a little bit of inspiration to see you through um so yeah that is our november book just kids by patty smith um i i gave so many copies of this to people and then i think i even gave my own copy away so i just the other day was in gaze the word bookshop found this on the shelf there and was like, oh yes I must get that copy and I must, um, we must do that. So that was a good find. Right, hang on. I'm going to put my phone down again so that we can get on to the December book. Okay, here we go, another tree stump. Um, right, the dark is rising. My season keeper. This is, I think, Try and see if it's got my name in the front or my brother's. Oh yeah, no. Look. Sorry. Here we go. Emily. I read that when I was very young. Um, this book. Oh my God. If you haven't read it, you must read it. It is so powerful. It is so good. I've read it so many times over the years. Um, from when I was very young and then repeatedly... Um, when I was still quite young and then still repeatedly now I'm a grown-up um, there's something incredibly powerful about it so it's about how to introduce it so it's, it's about young Will Stanton who turns 11 years old and it's kind of midwinter around midwinter's eve and he suddenly kind of slips through time and discovers that he must, he's kind of engaged, he is one of the old ones and he's engaged in this kind of battle against the dark and the dark is rising and only Will can stop them. And I mean, it's, it's terrible, it's absolutely terrifying because there's this incredibly warm, cozy, homely sort of real life and then he just slips out of it into this other world. Um, which is the sort of same world, but, but different. So, yeah, it, it's so, it's such a powerful thing. And I think, I think it's particularly powerful because of the way it engages with England and the landscape and the feeling of myth and 
folklore and history that is in sort of every tree, every path. Um, it's sort of no surprise really that this book has been very inspiring for Robert McFarlane, who, you know, wrote one of his books, The Old Ways, um, which very much kind of comes up in this book. Um, yeah, I, it's a children's book and it's kind of wild old cover. I know children's books are often not really taken seriously, but I think there's a growing movement to to really see them as literary works. And I think this is, for me, certainly up there with not only the best children's books of all time, but possibly the best books of all time. So we'll be reading it around Christmas. Um, so yeah, it's our December book, and it's a particularly good time to read it as it all takes place just in in those days around then. Um, so I can't wait to discuss that with you. Right, let's see if I can manage to get them all out to show you once more. And ah, hopefully see you on a walk, or God, it doesn't say badly, on a walk or a Zoom or a discussion thread or even just by sending me an email um, and we can discuss them together. There we go. That's at least three of the covers. You can kind of see in there, there's the final spine. Thank you for coming on my walk and hopefully see you at a walking book club soon. Bye.